This is Henry again, and in this tutorial we're going to uh, map a component onto a surface using a custom space syntax. So in our last tutorial we mapped a component onto a surface using a box, uh, and this time we're going to use a little bit more of a generalized example, in this case a, um, a hexagon, uh, a hexagon grid. And you can generalize this to sort of any shape, but I'm going to show you how to use uh, uh, draw a hexagon grid and use that to map a hexagonal based component um, onto a surface. So the first thing I want to do is I want to establish our grid. So here under grid um, we'll get a uh, hex grid um, and this actually uh, the default is it's at world xy. Um, I'm going to make the grid size a little bit bigger. Um, it's not really going to matter what size I make it because ultimately uh, it's just going to get mapped onto the surface. We'll see that in a second. Um, but what does matter is um, the number of cells across and the number down. And we'll hook that up to a slider. Right. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to be able, want to be able to map that onto a surface. And I have a surface right here that I modeled earlier in Rhino. Um, but the first thing we need to do that is we need a reference plane. And actually, the easiest way to do that is to go under surface, primitive, and make a bounding box. And hook up the output. Actually, let's let's dump this to a parameter first. Let's call that uh, reference hexes and send those to the bounding box. And you see you get a series of bounding boxes, but if you go and you change the option to union box um, and you flatten the input, because right now it's a list of lists, you see now you get one box and it's a flat box um, for all of your hexes that'll grow and shrink, uh, you know, as you change the sliders. So the, the last thing, so that's a flat box. We need to explode that so that we can get a, a surface out of it. And if you use deconstruct BREP, uh, the output face is basically an untrimmed surface, and that untrimmed surface is the new uh, reference surface for your hexagon grid. Hex ref surf. Okay, so now all we need is we need another surface parameter and let's set it to the surface I modeled in Rhino. Turn off the layer there and we'll call this the hex surface. And ultimately, we're going we're gonna to make a 3D grid, so we'll need a bottom surface and a top surface. So let's decide this is going to be the bottom surface. Um, and under transform, morph, there's uh, a component called map to surface. And map to surface takes some curves like our reference hexes. It takes a source surface, like our hex ref surface here. That's that surface. And then a target surface. And then it will just, um, it will just map our hex grid onto this new surface. Right? And so that changes as I change the sliders. And so I can like, turn off the preview on that. These sliders um, effectively become just a way of building a, a new uh, hex grid on this surface. 
So like I said, we're going to want to develop a 3D component. So let's develop, uh, so we're going to need two sets of hexagons. So let's take our base surface here. Um, and under surface, uh, util, there's offset. We're going to offset this surface. So let's take our bottom surface. And we'll create a parameter called thickness. Maybe hook it up to a slider. And when I slide the slider, you can see I, I get a new offset surface. And let's dump that to a parameter. We'll call it hex top surf. And just copy our map surface and use the hex top surf as our, um, as our new input. Right. And so now here we have our bottom hexes. And here we have our top hexes. Mm -hmm. right. and if I turn the preview off, right, you can see I have two, two overlapping hex grids. Okay, so now let's develop our component. Um, so to do that, what we need is basically, um, we need to develop a um, you know, a, a component also based on a hexagon. So I'm just going to draw a point here, reference it in. So this is just for us to develop the component. Um, under plane, I'm going to get an XY plane. And under curve, primitive, I'll get a polygon. Now the default number of sides is six. Um, and just to make it a little bit bigger so we can see it, I'm going to give it a size of 12. All right, there we go. And so that's going to be sort of the, the, the basis for my, my bottom hexagon. And now we need to copy it up to give us a top hexagon. So I'm going to move and get a Z vector. I'll just use my same 12 here. I mean, as you know, because we're going to map it onto the surface, right? the size of this component, it doesn't really matter, actually. All right, so that's the bottom hex. That's the top hex. Um, so now maybe what we want is we want, um, we want the, uh, like a center point. Um, so I'm going to take my origin point and I'm going to, I'm going to move that up by the same 12. All right. So that gives me the center point up here. Um, and I'm going to draw a line, where, where is that, curve, primitive, line, right through the center of my, uh, my two hexes, and I'm going to uh, evaluate that curve, so I'll click reparameterize here. And I'll, reper uh, and I'll evaluate it based on a slider to give me my, um, my midpoint. So if I set that slider to be about 0.5, it's right in the middle. Um, and I'm going to do just a really, really simple kind of component. So I'm going to get maybe connect each one of these points uh, on each of the hexagons to the midpoint. Um, so I think the easiest way to do that, that I found, is to do a divide curve and set the end value to
to be one, uh, but set the true false for split it kinks to be true. And that says split it up at the corners. And if you mouse over it, you see you get six points, one for each of the sides of the hexagon. So these are our bottom points. And if we do that for the top hexagon, we get top points. And I'm going to combine them into uh, one point parameter, bottom first, then top, and just call it edge points. Uh, and then I'm going to draw a line again. And I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint to each of the ed uh, edge points. And I'll say, that's it. That's my component. Sort of makes a space frame. We'll call that um, component edges. Now, in order to make it easier to map onto the surface, I'm going to group that component. Uh, and you can find under sets, uh, I always forget where it is. Um, it's actually under transform, util, group. The group is set of objects. And then I can get a parameter that is a group parameter. And I'm going to call that component group. Now, um, so the, the thing that I need to do next is I need to be able to go from the, hex the reference hexagon, or two hexagons, to my new set of many sets of two hexagons. And to do that under transform, I'm going to use spatial deform which performs a spatial def uh, deformation based on a custom space syntax. Sounds fancy, but it's, it's not that hard. So it only takes three things. It takes the geometry to deform, and that's our um, component group. It takes a set of points describing the space syntax. And all that means, actually, is that uh, or for us, a, um, that set of points is the points that define the corners of my two, um, my two hexagons. So that's the edge points over here. So uh, just, just to see, it, the, the order of the points is going to be important. And if you want to see the order of the points, um, you can go to display. And point list is a super useful uh, component. Uh, sometimes what you need to do is you need to give it a uh, much bigger number so that you can see the, the size of the numbers here. I hooked that up. Oh, there we go. Right, And you can see that. Right, the points go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 0 is on top of 6. Looks, looks perfect. Right, so I'm going to take my edge points, and those form the, um, the points that describe the space syntax. Now, the last thing it needs is it needs a set of forces. And that just means a vector from each one of these uh, 12 edge points to a new set of 12 points for each of the components. Right? And so what that means is that we need to do uh, the same thing for each one of these hexagons, uh, which is to say get all its points as we did uh, for the reference hexagon. So um, you know, once again, the way you do that is you go to division, uh, divide curve, and you set the n to be 1. 
and you set the k to be true. Right? You do that for both the bottom and the top hexes. And let's send that to a um, parameter. Bottom points. Top points. Right. If we go back um, and we look again at um, at our at our component, you can see that I did the bottom ones are first in the list and the top ones are second. So we have to do that again. Bottom ones first, top ones second. And if you mouse over and if you you click to s simplify this, you see that you have. Uh, 2,304 lists of 12 points each, which is right. That's what you want. You want each one to be a list of 12 points, just like our uh, base component has 12 points. So let's call this target points. So you could see, for example, if you were to hook up your um, point list, to get the numbers for each of your target points. We turn if we turn this value up, right? You get a whole you get a whole lot of numbers. Uh, but the thing that's really important is there, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, um, et cetera, as opposed to one long list. That's super important. Um, so here, in order to get our set of uh, forces, our vectors, we can go to vector, two-point vector, and say that we want a set of vectors from our edge points to our target points, right? And that's gonna give us uh, another 2,304 lists of vectors. And we plug that into deform, you can see that what happens now is that our component gets deployed across all of those hexagons. So if we were to go back and turn off the base hexagons here, turn off our points, target points, um, you can see that we now have uh, a system where just like we did last time, we've deployed a component across a grid, but in this case, the grid is a hex grid, uh, not a rectangular grid. And if we turn this down, you can get a better sense you can still kind of see the hexagons in there. Um, if we change the distance between the two surfaces, you can see the depth of the component changing. And the last thing is if we, you know, if we were to change the component right here, let's change this to a, a perspective view. Right, if we change where the center point is, you can see the center point, which goes in between the two surfaces, moving up and down. And you could generalize this for any component. Um, and uh, any surface, you know, of course, if we turn the um, surface back on in Rhino and turn its points on, you know, we can, we can still move the surface and everything updates. So the last thing we would need to do um, if we wanted to, let's say, pipe these is we could ungroup them and then you're left with a, um, you know, just a series of curves that if you wanted to, uh, you, could, you could pipe, you could start to make into surfaces, uh, you know, wh whatever you want to do.